Hello and welcome to a DITV Sports Update. I'm Mike Wollen. Joining me later will be Nick Richards and Jason Eppner with further analysis. The Iowa men's basketball team has had a long five days to think about their disappointing loss to Minnesota last Saturday. The Hawkeyes have also had five days to prepare for Illinois this upcoming Saturday. Well, what's at stake? If the Hawkeyes win out, they guarantee themselves no worse than a share of the Big Ten title. Coach Alford and the Hawks know that for the first time in a long time, they control their own destiny. Our pressure is to take care of ourselves. Um, we don't have to hope that anybody else gets beat. Um, we just have to take care of what we got to do. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure on us just because we're on the road at a very difficult place to play. Uh, but I don't know game-wise as far as importance of winning, there's any more on us than it is them. You know, we know what we got ahead of us. It's a great team we're playing Saturday with, you know, the two, the two winningest players in the history um, of Illini basketball playing their senior night. So it's uh, that's, that's not an easy game, and next week won't be easy either. We just got to continue the journey and keep getting better. It's better to have your, it in your hands instead of having to worry about, oh, this team needs to be this team. It's, it, it, it never works out that way. It seems like whenever that needs to happen, it doesn't go our way. So, I mean, when we have three games left, and uh, if we win these three, we get, the, we get a, a taste of the Big Ten Championship, then so be it. That's what it's about. You know, I think what we got to do is just come out and be ready. We played well there last year. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, just concentrate, execute, and uh, get the job done. All season long, the Hawkeyes have shown resiliency, bouncing back from losses. Iowa will attempt the near impossible going into Assembly Hall, a place that they've lost 16 out of 17 games in the past. Now let's send it to the studio with Nick Richards for his keys to the game. Thanks Mike. Hello, I'm Nick Richards, DI Sports Writer, and I'll tell you how Iowa will beat Illinois this Saturday. My first key to the game is stopping D. Brown. The Hawkeyes stifled the quick guard in Carver Hawkeye Arena, holding him to just 6 points on 2 of 13 shooting. Iowa harassed the Illinois senior with Mike Henderson and Tony Freeman in a 15-point win on January 7th, forcing Brown to commit five turnovers. We'll have to do the same if Iowa wants to stay atop uh, the conference with Ohio State. The second key is fouls. Iowa has to go at James Augustine and get him in early foul trouble. The forward picked up his fourth foul with 14-32 left in the game in Iowa City and was effectively neutralized because of it, spending most of the second half on the bench. On the flip side, Iowa has to protect Eric Hansen on the defensive end. The Hawkeyes are a much better team when he's on the floor, so two quick fouls could derail Hansen and Iowa quickly. The Hawkeyes' third key is the transition game. Iowa can't get caught in a foot race with an Illinois team that is faster and more athletic than they are. Brown loves to push the tempo as much as possible, and the Hawkeyes can't allow him to get out and run. If they do and Iowa gets caught in a, in a running game with the Illini, Iowa could slide out of the top spot in the conference. My final key is relax. Iowa just needs to relax. The Big Ten title is not lost despite Ohio State's win at Michigan State on Wednesday. Iowa still controls their own destiny. With three more wins, Iowa will take the top spot in the conference tournament because of their win over the Buckeyes. Iowa can't get caught up in Illinois Senior Day, and they can't let Champaign haunt them as it's done on so many occasions. It's a daunting task considering Iowa's poor record in Assembly Hall, a building Iowa has won in just twice since 1987. But with a win, this team could do something no Iowa squad has done since 1979, win a Big Ten championship. Those are my keys. Now all, all Iowa has to do is go out and actually play. Let's now send it over to Jason and Mike for some breakdown of Iowa, Illinois from earlier this year. Guys? Thanks, Nick. Joining me now is DITV sports reporter Jason Eppner. Jason, what do the Hawks need to do on Saturday to get it done? Mike, the Orange Crush is going to be going crazy, but the Hawks can get the job done if they just stick to playing their game. Let's break down some tape and see what the Hawks need to do to leave Champaign with a big W. Now the Hawks have not rebounded well their last two games. In fact, against Minnesota, they were out-rebounded 32-19. Rebounding is all positioning and hustle and desire. Watch Horner get caught up on the pick. Nobody crashes, Trannon seals them off, and an easy two for Michigan State. That cannot happen on Saturday. Illinois likes to run D. Brown off staggered screens. Watch Mike Henderson as he defends. He goes above the first one and then tries to go underneath the second. Not a very efficient route. Probably should have trailed both. Had Greg Bruner hedging the second screen. Instead, D. Brown gets a good look, and that will go down at Assembly Hall. 
again, the Hawks need to control Illinois' transition game. The Illini love to run here. Henderson gets in deep. The Hawks do a decent job of getting back. You'd like to see him turn and sprint a little more. But Horner gets a hand in the face. Bruner is there to clean it up. No harm done. The Hawkeyes have played excellent team defense all year with a few exceptions. Watch Bruner trapping in the corner and then gets all the way over to the other side of the court. Takes a charge. Excellent defense. They'll need to play that way in Champaign. There's an old saying, cut off the head and the body will die. And if the Hawks go into Saturday with that mentality, Illinois will again be in trouble. Here, Tony Freeman all over D has a hand up contesting the shot. And Illinois' offense just completely breaks down. Everybody stands around. Brown throws up garbage. Very successful defensive possession. It's time for the Hawks to start playing with that poise on the road as senior team should. And no matter how they shoot the ball on Saturday, they can control their game with smothering defense. Mike, let's get it done. You're right, Jason. And now let's get it done by playing a little Hawkeye fact or fiction. First up, D. Brown, does he get 15 points on Saturday? Well, that's a fact, Mike. There's no way that Brown will be held to six points again. But I don't think he'll get much more than his average. Iowa held Maurice Ager and Shannon Brown in check two, two games ago. D. Brown will attract all sorts of attention, but Iowa is going to make someone else beat them. You know, Jason, I agree. I also think it's a fact. Brown is too good of a player to have consecutive games, bad games, against the same team. The key is controlling the tempo. Brown loves pushing the ball up the floor. There's no doubt Mike Henderson, Jeff Horner, and Tony Freeman will have their work cut out for them. All right, Mike. Well, Hawkeye Factor Fiction Part 2, Eric Hansen will foul out. You know, as much as it pains me to say this, I think Hansen will foul out. The Hawkeyes are a top five defensive team in the nation with Hansen on the floor, but the guy consistently picks up early fouls. If Hansen can stay on the court in the first half, Iowa could really control the tempo, but the way Hansen has been playing lately, Iowa might have a long night ahead of them. Well, I somewhat agree, Mike, but I'm going to call it fiction, but only because Coach Alford won't let him foul out. The story this year when Hansen has picked up a quick two fouls, he's yanked in a hurry and you won't see him for the rest of the first half. Yes, Hansen has fouled out significantly less this year than last, but that's because Alford has had a short leash. He picks up two fouls early. I'm worried that the Hawkeyes lose control of this game in the first half. Third factor fiction, do the Hawkeyes beat Illinois, Jay? Right, I'm going to be optimistic. You can call me a homer if you want, but I'm going to call this one a fact. You have to understand that since 1999, Illinois has only been held under 50 points once, and that was the game against Iowa this year. I know Bruce Weber has a lot of guys he likes to rotate in and out, but I feel like everyone relies a little too much on D. Brown. I think the Hawks contain Brown and have a breakout game on the road finally. Well, Jason, if Hansen fouls out, I don't see this Iowa team going into Champaign and leaving with a victory. There are too many factors going against the Hawks, with Illinois back against the wall, senior night, and 16 out of the last 17 games at Assembly Hall going Illinois' way. As big of a Hawkeye fan as I am, I just think this is fiction. Mike, the Hawks go on to win the Big Ten Championship outright. Fact or fiction? Well, I just prefaced that by saying that Iowa was going to lose to Illinois. So I'd like to say, unfortunately, this is fiction. Iowa controls their own destiny, holding the tiebreaker over Ohio State if the two teams tie. However, OSU's schedule includes games against Northwestern, Purdue, and Michigan, all teams the Buckeyes should beat. Now, if Iowa wins at Illinois, completely ignore everything I've said, Jay. Let's hear what you got to say. Well, we haven't really agreed on too much so yeah. far, but well, since I'm saying the Hawks beat Illinois on Saturday, I'm going to say this is a fact. The two remaining games after this one are home, and we're unblemished so far, knock on wood. Ohio State, as you said, has the easiest three remaining games. They're toughest with Michigan, but that's at home. But I think Iowa takes care of business against a Penn State team that's gotten a lot better, and then we'll get that well-deserved victory and, and revenge against Bo Ryan's Badgers in the season finale. You could say it, Hawkeyes Conference champions. You know, I don't ever think I was ever going to say that, but it's, it could be an amazing feeling in a couple of weeks. And you know what? That's all that we have time for for Hawkeye Factor Fiction. Iowa plays at Assembly Hall on Saturday at 5 p.m. DITV will have full game highlights and post-game reactions in sports on Sunday. For Nick Richards, Jason Epner, I'm Mike Wollen. This has been a DITV Sports Update.